Hi guys, um, this is going to be another interesting analysis, prediction, and then forecasts, including recommendation on um, some of my picks and some of the stocks that I will be buying in 2022, some stocks that I'm holding. Although I've started buying them right now ahead of the new year, but I still think they have um, good upside potential as we wrap up uh, 2021 and then look forward to 2022 and then if you look at my screen i uh, intentionally uh, put up this screen to start my conversation like this now you will see here that i talked about um 80 percent of nigerian stocks going down to um low prices or multi-year low very soon and that's this prediction that i'm so sure of in the next uh, one to two years so we're looking at um 12 months period now i miss this uh, prediction so does it mean that some stocks will not go up does it mean it's all the stocks that are going to crash now i didn't say 100 percent. i talked about 80 percent, meaning that majority of the stocks in nigerian market may likely go down because at this point most of them looks overbought and then um, we're looking at something interesting that's going to drive um, the economy in 2022. Now, we know that our country is directly connected to US dollar. So whatever happens to the US dollar, it tends to affect um, Nigeria to a very large extent. Why? Because we depend on this currency to short run the economy indirectly. So even though we don't spend Naira, we don't spend dollar in Nigeria, you will see that most of the things we consume are directly connected to the US dollar. So whatever happens to the US dollar will most likely affect us. So that's why we need to also look at the US economy and what's likely going to happen in the US market. Now, there is a key economic indicator that tends to drive the um, economy. And central banks use that to curb inflation. Besides, they even use it as one of their biggest monetary policy uh, tools. And that's what we call interest rates. And that too is interest rates. Now, there's been this bold headline everywhere that very soon the US Fed will likely increase interest rate multiple times in 2022. So look at Financial Times here. You see Fed official says first interest rate could rise, first interest rate rise could come as soon as March next year. And then you see here the Federal Reserve could raise interest rate as early as March in face of alarming high inflation according to the senior US central bank official. So if the US Fed is looking at raising rates next year and here we're looking at at least three times before the end of 2022, what is going to be the effect? What will likely be the effect on the Nigeria economy? That's important. As an investor you need to look at how we are connected to this market. Now, in the forex market, in the currency market, there is something we call carry trade or carry traders. These are people who borrow in a country or an economy with lower interest rates and then they invest in currencies of countries that offers higher interest rates. It's as simple as that. Country A, when you borrow in the economy, the interest rate is around, let's say, 0.5%. So, which means when you, and you know interest rate also drive borrowing rates. So when you borrow in that economy, you're going to pay 0 0.5. And then when you then take that money and fix it in another economy where the interest is as high as, um, let's say, 4 or 5%. Do you understand? You can see that when you take your capital and your interest, you most likely pay back what you borrowed and still have enough left. So these are carry traders. These are, although it's actually institutional investors that practice this, by default, our economy should be one that enjoys this trading strategy because foreign investors are supposed to come into Nigeria because of our high interest rate, which is around, um, I think, um, 15, 12, 13, 14 percent of your about. So that's very important. So when US Fed is looking at raising interest rates, automatically it means that the rate of return on fixed income securities or fixed deposits, I'm just trying to use the layman. Um, on fixed deposit we definitely increase so um fixed income traders um 
risk averse investors, both institutional and other, will most likely want to buy more of the US dollar. So that's why the US dollar index has been strengthening in the last three, four, five weeks. So let's look at DSY. DSY is dollar index. That's the strength of the US dollar against major currency. You can see the strength of this index. You can see here. So the dollar index has been strengthening since May from um, a low of 89. You can see the double bottom right here. It's the found support at this region. And then it has rallied from 89 to 96. So this is the reason it's been running because investors are anticipating higher rates. And higher rates tend to strengthen the currency of an economy. So that's what it means. Now, when this rate is increased, automatically we expect the dollar to also become stronger against major currency. So that's one of the reasons I'm forecasting at least 600 naira exchange rate to the uh, dollar by 2022 because the higher rates here will definitely move funds from emerging market currencies, emerging market economy to the developed economy. So that means people are going to be selling emerging market currencies to buy the US dollar, which would also drive the strength of the index. So that's one area you need to look at. Now, when you look at this, it means again that people would likely be selling off the naira to buy the dollars. People will likely be moving funds away from Nigeria to the US dollar. Funds, there's going to be fund flow, that's certain. So what is going to be the effect in the markets? Definitely, you know, every aspect of the economy would definitely, uh, major part of the economy where foreign investors have been putting their funds, majorly FPIs, foreign portfolio investments in Nigeria, would definitely move to the US. And when it moves to the US, we are going to see more of the Naira being offered for sale and then demand for dollar increase as this rates rise in the US continues to go higher. So what does that mean for stock market investor? Now, um, one, I am looking at the market that is extremely overbought. Now, I had talked about this market being overbought for a long, uh, for, for long, and then I'm still talking about it because I am very certain. I've never seen anywhere or any time that the NSC All Share Index moved past 44,000 basis points, or 44, or there are about 44, 45, 48, or 50,000 basis points. So in the last uh, six to seven years. So you will see here that right here in 2014, how the index rallied to 42,000, and then between 2014 to 2016, we had a major dip, and then the market rallied back to the same region. And then you see what happened, the market pulled back a little bit. And then we're seeing the market at this point pull back a little bit and then rally back. So this is like a double top. So with US Fed looking to increase interest rates and all that. So I think that's also going to be bearish for Nigerian stock too, because um, people would like to like a foreign portfolio investors might shell off their risky assets and then see how to move funds into risk free or fixed income securities. Um also take advantage of the higher rate. So, look at NSC or share in this. You can see at this stage, it's still trading within the overbought region, and I am still anticipating a dip. So, I'm better positioned to look for companies that are at the bottom of the market rather than buying companies that have been up for so long. So, I do not want to buy overbought companies, rather, I want to buy companies that are oversold or emerging from oversold region. So let's do a recap of um, 2020 analysis. Now, if you go back to my YouTube videos, just search um, Glofolio, that's my YouTube channel now, Glofolio, which means global portfolio, where I will be talking about stocks and cryptocurrency. So that's why I think it's a Glofolio, global, global portfolio. So I mentioned three stocks to buy before January. That was in December 24th. December 24, 2020. So these three stocks were UCAP. I talked about UCAP. This is UCAP. So 24th of January of December, sorry, should be around this region. So here, 24th. So let me go back to my weekly charts. So 24th. 
okay, so so here so the this period. So you can see you cap was selling for four naira sixty-eight cobo. So you can see between then and now you cap have moved from four naira sixty-eight cobo to nine naira ninety-five cobo. That's over hundred percent. Now the second stock I talked about was um Honeywell. I talked about Honeywell December twenty fourth. Let's look at December twenty fourth. Okay, between this region, Honeywell was selling for one naira twenty one cobo. You can see how Honeywell has rallied from one naira twenty one cobo to three naira. That's almost one hundred percent return. And then the third one I talked about, um, Lasaco Insurance. So let's look at Lasaco Insurance. Um, Lasaco Insurance. So it was around one hundred thirty-five. So Lasaco Insurance is selling for one point one. So we had two stocks um, delivering over hundred percent return, and then one stock going down. Now, one thing about the stock market is that you can never be a perfect trader, but you can be a profitable trader. A perfect trader is looking for hundred percent hit, but a profitable trader is looking for, or oh, is looking for, a portfolio that is generating more return than loss. Now, let's look at what a perfect trader is. A perfect trader will want all the three stocks, both Lasaco, Ucap, and Honeywell, to hit, or probably to go up. Why a profitable trader is looking at in having a higher number of stock go up compared to the ones that are coming down in such a way that when you take your losses away from your profit you still have net income just like a normal business revenue from the companies that are or the stocks that are up minus expenses that's the ones that are down then you should have a net profit that's a profitable trader why a profit trader is looking at buying stocks that would go up and it's not profit nobody in this market so the next stock i'm going to be talking about would also follow the same pattern i'm not looking for the perfect pick but i'm looking for a profitable pick that means we're looking at buying collection of stocks that will do well that means in the next six months we're looking at a higher number of these stocks delivering good numbers compared to the ones that will go down now i have six good stocks to share six good stocks to share um uh good stocks that i'm looking at in 2021 2022 sorry but i would be dropping three right now and then the remaining three would be for members in my private community so at least i tried i'll be dropping six stocks three will be here which i'm going to mention and then the next three will be in my private community so like i said I would advise you get the six stocks so that you don't buy the ones that will not do well and eventually end up being frustrated. So I would advise you buy the six. So before I continue, I want you to subscribe to my community. I have a lot that is coming up very soon. Yes, I have a lot that is coming up very soon. And it's so interesting um, that I wouldn't want you to miss out on my offers. So I'm not in this market. To sell products, no. I mean, this market to recommend stocks. I've been running my platform um, for close to five years now. I started in 2017, so by 2022, I should be five years plus. So I've been in this market for a long time. So if I'm in this market to sell products, I think I should be out of the market by now. But because of the consistent profit I've generated over time, I'm still going to be trading in this market. But I have to be. I need to be very careful to apply caution and also look at market conditions to know best stocks to buy and then the ones not to buy so we've talked about the stocks i mentioned in 2020 and then how they have delivered so what are we looking at in 2021 2022 sorry which stocks are we actually going to buy right now now before i jump into the stocks to buy in 2022 look at the nsc or share index right now you see this is a weekly chart you notice how the index found resistance at this point and then pull back and then rally again so this is like a double top formation this is a double top formation right now now we are yet to see the 20 days moving average cross below the 50 days 
for us to have a confirmed bearish uh, trend. So you can see right here, we are yet to see the 20 days cross below the 50 days. So which means we might still probably say we are in a short term bull. We are in a short term bull, but I do not see this bull gaining momentum. I do not see this bull becoming uh, stronger in the next three, four, five, six months. So you need to be extremely careful. You need to be extremely careful. So if you're buying high cap stocks, stocks that have rallied so high, thinking that they will continue to rally, you need to think twice. That's why you need to approach this market from an index perspective. So when you look at the index, you're looking at general general markets. You're trying to gauge the extent to which this market will get to. Because whatever happens in the, in the market will most likely affect your stock, whether it's a good company. So the first time the market crashes or dips, you will see both good and bad stocks follow line. Follow, follow the same pattern. Now, at some point, investors will start looking at stocks that are selling at a bargain and then they begin to snap them immediately. So, even though I'm going to recommend some stocks, it does not mean they will go up immediately. Market may dip and these stocks will go down. But the truth is that the fundamentals behind them would definitely make them a bargain for the entry. So, that's, that's why I'm recommending this stock. Now, another important thing about these stocks is that they are emerging from the bottom. So, this is a, this is a different thing entirely buying a stock that is at the top. So, you have a bull market, you have a bear market. We have beginning of a bull, end of a bull, beginning of a bear, end of a bear. So, when you say you want to buy a stock that's in a bull market, be very careful because what if the bull is coming to an end, meaning that the moment you jump into the market, the stock starts reversing. But what if you're buying at the beginning of a bull? You will most likely see your stock go up because the big run is just starting or Maybe you join at the middle. So do not make that mistake of buying a stock that is at the top of the market. Always buy at the bottom or at the mid section of the market. Same thing applies to a bear market. You want, you want to sell at the uh, you want to sell in the bear market. What if the stock is just ending that bearish run? Very soon the bull will take over. So always know the stage that a stock is before you buy, so that you don't get yourself caught up in that bearish sell-off. So it's important. Now, when you buy majority of your stock at the beginning of a bull run or at the midsection of a bull run, you increase your probability. Remember, we are not in this market to be perfect. So we are looking at stocks that has high probability setup. That means the chance that they are going to go up compared to the chance that are going to go down, it's high. So if there are probability is one, that's certainty is one. I mean, now if you want to look at probability of a stock going up, we're looking at at least zero point seven. And then probability of it coming down is 0.3. So you want to achieve 70% winning rate in this market. If I buy 10 stock, I want to see at least six, seven stock go up so that the return from this seven stock can cover the three or four that it didn't go up. That's the idea. This market. So, like I said, the bull may not gain upper hand. I've shared one fundamental reason: the US rate hike, which I know would definitely hit the Nigerian market and other emerging market so be very careful at this point now how do i approach the market in 2022 the first stage to approach this market in 2022 is to go by what sectorial investment by looking at sectors by looking at sectors that's important now one thing that i've seen in this nigerian market that works very well is that i noticed that companies that sell in inelastic products tend to do well that means Companies that have pricing power, companies that have the ability to command prices, they most they will most likely do well because whatever economic um, um, circle that we are in, they have the ability to power or to increase their margin by increasing prices. So that's one is another uh, secret I just shared with you. So let's go back to our monthly charts. So. What are we looking at in 2022? Now, I'm going to be mentioning a few sectors that I think will continue to do well in 2022. Now, the first sector that I know will continue to do well in 2022 is the consumer goods sector. Inflation is still very high. Food prices is still very high. Now, even though we've seen some food companies or consumer goods stocks run up to their high uh, price in years, it still doesn't mean that the sector is overbought. So they might, there are still some sectors, some sector stocks that are yet to pick up from this uh, bullish run, from this uh, trend. And one of the companies that I'm looking at that I know will most likely do well next year is
Guinness. Guinness was hard hit last year. Um, in 2020, sorry, because of COVID and all that. And I do not see that lockdown happening again. That's the truth. I do not see the lockdown happening again. Now, look at Guinness. Guinness has suffered. Like, this stock has suffered extreme sell-off from a high price of 219 era in, in March 2013. Look at how the stock had dipped in the last nine years down to a low of 12 naira. And in July, it has staged an impressive recovery from 13 to um, 39 dollars. So this is a company I think will do well in 2022, considering the fact that they've started recovering um, extensively in 20, from, from August 2020 and then the whole of 2022. So I, I think the trend will continue in 2022. Now, what I'm watching out for in Guinness, basically, is the trend of their revenue and profit. So let's look at Guinness right now. Let's look at the financials of Guinness. Nigeria. Okay, so look at the financials of Guinness in Nigeria in the last three three years. So you look at this from 2019, 131, we had a dip. You can see because of COVID, we had a dip to 104. Then in 2021, you can see how revenue increased from 104 to 160. And then trailing 12 months, meaning the last 12 quarters, last four quarter. Guinness is already already reporting 177, so meaning that they are on track to beating their previous year earnings. So, which is a positive news for shareholders of Guinness Nigeria. And then, when you go down to look at the profit again, you will see that in 2020 the company actually reported a loss. You can see from um, 5.5004 in 2019. You can see, and we understand why we know where it's coming from, which is what COVID uh, issues and all that lockdown. And then you can see how the company recovered, recovered from a loss of 12.5 to a profit of 1.2. And trailing 12 months, the company is already reporting 6,140, which is almost uh, four to five times the revenue, uh, the profit is generated in previous year. So that means the company is on track to reporting impressive numbers so this is one reason you need to pay attention to uh guinness and you can see the eps the earnings per share 5.7 loss to 60.6 and then 2.8 so guinness is one stock you need to pay attention to right now so i'm looking at guinness um moving above the 50 days going uh rising above the 50 day moving average of 48 so for me to have a confirmed bullish run on Guinness. I want to see the price clears 48. And then I have a short-term resistance right here. It was previous support before uh, it dipped. You can see how it dipped to this level before it bounced. A little. So this is support and then I think it should be resistant. So I'm looking at Guinness moving from 39 to 58. And the way I intend to trade this is that if it moves above 58, if once it gets to 58, I may likely sell off to watch how what, what happens here. But if it clears 58 and bounces back to 58, which I think will become is another support, then we're looking at a rally to a high of this 118. So this is one area that I think is a major resistance. So if Guinness eventually pulls through to trade above 58 to 60 the next resistance should be what 118 naira so this is very very important so my my take on guinness right now is that from the fundamental perspective the company has been reporting good numbers impressive recoveries some might say if some might say because it's coming from a low base figure because they reported a loss of uh, no you can see what happened between 2021 
and trailing 12 months. So if you go by just 2021 results, you might want to think that's a low base figure. But when you look at the trailing 12 months, which is very important, you will see that this company is on track to beating its previous year figure. So Guinness is a stock to watch right now. So you might think the risk facing this company now is what if there's another lockdown? I must be very sincere with you. Yes, there might be a threat of COVID. It might pose a little bit risk, a little risk, but I do not see a major lockdown happening again in Nigeria. That is, that's, that's for sure. I do not see that because the government is not prepared for it. The government is not prepared. Citizens are not prepared for it. No money in Nigeria for the government to, to, uh, to, to otherwise, uh, as COVID relief, after all, the, such was not uh, given even in the last lockdown. So I do not see that happening. So which is going to be a bullish, um, uh, attract bullish sentiment for Guinness right now. So with this the price going up right now, I, I think Guinness is a stock to watch. And then we have immediate resistance at 58. So between uh, 58 and 39, 58 minus 39, that's 19, 19 divided by 39. That's, I have like 48% rally between this point and this point. 48% rally between this point. And if Guinness eventually clears this region, we're looking at a huge rally to 118 Naira. So watch that. So if Guinness continues to deliver impressive numbers, we should see that reflect in higher share prices. So that is Guinness. Now the second stock that I'm looking at right now, is Wapco. Wapco. Now this is the second stock. Now this is one of the stocks that I recommended uh, sometimes ago, and then um, I talked about Wapco hitting twenty seven um, naira, and the stock did hit the twenty seven naira uh, price before eventually pulls back. So I still see this stock as a good buy. I still see the rally in this stock building up very soon. Why? Now, you notice how the stock has traded below this trend line for a long time. And then you can see how the stock eventually broke this trend line right here. You can see the stock has traded below the trend line uh, between 2014 and 2020. And we can, between 2014 and 2020, I can see in September, it did break that trend line. This is, what, this is the trend line. This one you see here, connecting the high in each year. So you can see how the stock cleared that and eventually found um, resistance at this region. You can see here this region, which also marked as previous support. And then in 2012, this was a major support. And then in 2017, a major support before it did. So now it's acting at resistance. So sometimes you need to go back to previous years to know where the key level of the stock would likely be. And then you can see how the stock found resistance at that same region before it pulls back. So right now, I think Wapco is also building up um, a very strong momentum, which I think should drive the stock very soon. Why? You see here how the stock like, like, uh, likely found support at this region. Then, so with 20 days also uh, looking at um, about to cross the 50 days. So I think that's going to be a bullish momentum for Lasaku, uh, for uh, Wapco very soon. So you can see here. So this is a this is an industrial uh, cement uh, or industrial goods company that I think is yet to show its true potential. So with Dangote Cement rallying higher, I think 2022 Wapco might outperform Dangote Cement by huge number. So you need to watch that right now. So let's look at Dangote Cement. So you can see how Dangote Cement has rallied so high right now you can see here so wapco is yet to pick up so and with the uh, lower numbers um that is reporting on its um finance cost yes the company is able to has been able to settle its finance costs and then higher revenue i think wapco is on track to deliver good results so let's look at uh, wapco results in the last three years Wapco. Okay, so let's look at the financials of Wapco. Comes to 
Yes. Okay. Yes. You can see in the last three years, from 2019, 20, 2018, 217.8, 212, a dip. And then in 2020, at the peak of the COVID, can you see here, 230. You can see in 2021, it's on track to beat the previous year. 2012 months is 269, which is higher. So which means in the last three years, the company has been growing its earnings cost, uh, revenue earning consistently. So let's look at the profits. See here, 15.5, 30, and 43, which means on track to beat its previous year. So that is why I am paying attention to WAPCO. Now, there is a difference between buying a stock because the fundamentals are going, are doing well, or the fundamentals are good, sorry, and buying a stock because the company is about to emerge from an oversold and bottom. A combination of these two is a solid basis or solid, con we will produce high conviction stocks. So, I'm not buying WAPCO because the fundamentals are good. Yes, it's one of the reasons. But I'm looking at timing too. Am I buying at the beginning of a bull run? Am I buying at the bottom? I want to buy at the bottom of the market because it increased my chance of making money from this stock. So remember what I said before. You want you don't want to buy because there's, there's a bullish run. What if the bull is coming to an end? But this does not look like a bull that is coming to an end because the market has been in a solid downtrend for the past three, four, five, six years. You can see how it's emerging. So if it eventually push through we're looking at a stock that should be going back to 29 from this price and then if it clears this region we're looking at a stock that should be trading above um we have 54 around 54 region so you can see here so for 2020 the stock started at um 22 and then you can see where it closed just marginal change so i think with the company stock price Trading above the 20 and the 50 comfortably right now, it pretends it, it's a sign. Do you understand? It's a solid case for this company to go up. It means that very soon, because the company's stock has not traded above this region for a long time. Look at the stock. It has always been below, you can see here, below the 20 and then the 50 for a long time. You can see right here. The 20 and the 50 have acted as resistance for a long time and you can see how the stock is eventually trading above these two moving average so that means wapco is a solid buy wapco is a good buy right now so if the company if the company continues to uh, uh, report higher numbers both on top and bottom line as well as dividends so i see this company rallying higher in 2022 and as governments also allocate more funds infrastructural development and all that real estate companies so this is a good company to buy into wapco now remember i talked about um, uh six stocks but i'll only mention three the next company that i have for you is academy press academy press academy press is up by 33 percent this month so far and then you can see how the company is emerging from the bottom you can see here if you notice if you notice the three stocks that i've mentioned so far if you look at them they all have similar chart pattern and that chart pattern is that they have been down in the last five years and are just emerging from the bottom that's exactly what i talked about in my book how that's why i call it explosive stocks you are buying stocks that have 50, 100, or 250 return potential. How do you scan for stocks that are just emerging from the bottom? So there's a lot of things you need to look into before you're able to spot that stock. Beyond just the financial statement, you need to look at the major economic driver. You need to look at the reason. What are the key economic indicators? 